this episode on Sailing for Power. <laughs> Would we even be spirits if we didn't stop at the fad for a look? Fun times, Michael, what happened to champagne sailing? Champagne's gone bad. Just checking the weather for one last time. Um, I've checked Windy, Windu, Medai, and Sea Breeze. Sea Breeze, and they all say the same thing nor'east. It's been blowing nor'east all week, so should be pretty consistent about 15 knots. So if we leave at 11 o'clock tonight, that'll get us there tomorrow at about 5 pm for high tide into Yamba. So That's the high tide at the bar? Yeah, yeah. We just average it on six knots per hour, uh, which is what a lot of cruisers use. So six knots for 100 nautical miles means it'll take about 16 to 17 hours. Some people do it a bit faster, but yeah, we, if we're faster, it doesn't matter because we can just wait, but we don't want to be later than that and catch the run out tide. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's go, let's do this. Yeah, we're up. Seaway Tower, Seaway Tower. This is sailing vessel for power. Uh, we have two packs on board. Uh, ETA 1700 tomorrow. Over. It was a pretty rushed and dark departure from the Seaway. Yeah, this is my ship. Uh, we crossed the bar in the dark. It, was, it wasn't too bad. It's a big rolling swell coming in. Nothing breaking. It was just top of the tide. And, uh, yeah, we've got a big following sea, so we don't have, don't have any sails up. We're just motoring, and uh, Jess is Jess is just hand steering out there because the autopilot's not really keeping up, surfing down the waves a bit too much. Uh, yeah, motoring along at like 10 to 12 knots, I think now with following sea. Um, yeah, so catch up a bit later on. I was pretty happy to see the sunrise. Even though we've worked on boats, lived on boats, and driven home from spearing a million times in the dark, there's something that makes me anxious about sailing at night in our home with everything we own. Now that the sun was up, we were more comfortable putting the main up for the first time in the ocean. Absolutely perfect downwind conditions and four knots of current, we pulled out the headsail and made a feast for breakfast. Good morning. Good morning. Breakfast is served. Oh, hashy. What? Didn't buy a cat. Didn't hey, cat this is not a monohull breakfast. This is catamaran breakfast. <laughs> Shortly after, we had some breakfast guests arrive. Oh, it's so sick. <laughs> yeah, that's so Flapping sails, it was time to turn the engines on, so we thought we'd make the most of it. So we made a slight detour to the fad. We're not there yet, but we're on! <laughs> what do you reckon it is? Look at that. 
tuna. Oh, gone. Yeah, go. see the purple on him? Yeah, beautiful. Awesome. Oh well. MBT Lewis. We're not one. even at the fad yet. Woo <laughs> Alright, let's go. Would we even be Spiros if we didn't stop at the fad for a look? We need to put the sail, <laughs> put the sails down, turn the engines on and detour to the fab. Yeah, well we've got plenty of time. We're gonna get there early, so we might as well uh, oh. stop and smell the flowers on the way. No luck, Michael. There's another one. Fish aggregating devices, aka fads, are put out by our fisheries each summer. There's huge fixed moorings dropped offshore aimed to attract pelagic fish species which travel south with the warmer waters of the East Australian current at this time of year. Well, that's a change of events. The uh, beautiful nor'east downwind sailing the whole way is uh, not to be. We've still got that screaming EOC current dead against the wind, so it's just standing up and uh, yeah, sloppy jalopy. And uh, the motor that I fixed yesterday is similar kind of issue where it's not going into, uh, just cuts out when it goes into gear. So running on one engine, doing about three to five knots. It's a real pain in the ass, but look at this one just standing up. Detouring to the fads would turn out to be a vital mistake because it took us closer to the coast and on a more direct course to Yamba. Yeah, hopefully the bar's still okay. Um, yeah, crossing with one engine too, not fun. Let's see how we go. Really standing up now. Fun times, Michael, what happened to champagne sailing? Champagne's gone bad. <laughs> it's more like, it's more like uh, goon bag sailing. Quite literally horrible. <laughs> What happened? Just turned like complete suddenly, which is not what we planned on at all. Which way are we going? South. <laughs> so. It's like exactly where we want to go. It's, the wind's like straight in the nose, 20, gusting like 23 knots, 16 to 23 knots. And, and the current. And the current's screaming downhill still, so you're just getting it jacking up. This engine's not working again, it idles fine, doesn't go into gear, so we're on one engine just flogging it like flat stick, chewing through the fuel. And not ideal. Just not great. And then we got to go through a bar. We don't want to cross a bar with one engine, but what else can you do? We, we did think about going to Evans Head, possibly. It's a bit shorter of a run, it's protected from the wind, the bar's not as favourable, we get trapped in there, I don't know. We decided just to suck it up and just keep punching down. It's our backup if we have to. Yeah, so if we get to Yamba, we called BMR and they said the bar is fine. We'll, we'll get there after the running tide, which is not ideal, but um, they said they suspect it'll still be fine then. I think this wind's supposed to drop out, so we'll see what happens. We've still got another, yeah, it's still 13.6 nautical miles. Um, three hours, basically. Three hours, three and a bit. And we've been watching another boat on the AIS tracking. Yeah, we saw one boat coming down. They were behind us. They turned around and they just went past Evans and just went. They were uh, further north, so it would have been even harder slog for them. They just had it up as well, so they turned around. So we just keep going. It's about really tired now. We're pretty broken. The morale, the morale from the initial first passage high is well and truly worn off. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So I'll, I'll try to film it, but it is pretty hard to ever do waves justice on camera. 
After beating into it for too many hours, we finally arrived. Oh, finally, we can see the bar. It's been a funny, it's gone from like the high, high of sailing passages to just like the, oh man, beating into it only on a one engine. Um, yeah, interesting trick that John, the old owner, he gave us a ring. He, he tracked us on AIS and he said, oh, I noticed you guys were going four knots. And then he looked at the wind and saw, um, saw that we were beaten into it for the last five hours. He says, oh, you know, a really good trick is you put the main up, one reef in it, you pull it over to the uh, windward side, it just steadies the boat out. Far out, that saved us. I wish we knew that earlier. Just, just lifts the boat up over the waves a bit better. It doesn't let you slam in. Anyway, so we're just approaching the bar now. We're gonna pull the sail down, pull in our fishing line. And uh, hopefully the bar looks pretty tame. I'm sure it won't be too bad. Can't be any worse than what we've gone through for the last five hours. We did our first uh, bar crossing in the boat last night, leaving Seaway, which is nothing. It's our first one coming in, Yamba. After a long and exhausting five hours motor sail straight into 20 knots of wind, we arrived and crossed a very tame Yamba bar right on high tide. With only one engine working and the tide about to turn, it was a huge relief to finally be in safe harbour. Marine Rescue Yamba, Marine Rescue Yamba, this is SV Papau. SV Papau. Oh, I just wanted to let you know that we safely arrived in Yamba, inside the bar, and just like to be logged off, please. Thank you so much for your coverage. It's on Yamba. Beautiful. Much better than outside Yamba. Far out. Beautiful here. Absolutely stunning. After two days tied up at Yamba Tavern, Michael finally got the starboard engine back in action. Pull out this little tube that the fuel intake is, because that can get clogged sometimes. This whole tube was chock-a-block. Have a go at this stuff that was in there. That's like a, I think that's a leaf or something almost. I'm not 100% happy because <laughs> it works now. <coughs> I didn't change much. <laughs> well, I, I adjusted, I adjusted the cable and I cleaned the carby again. and cleaned the fuel filter and made sure it was like a fuel, not a fuel issue because that's what it sounded like. And then when I went to start it again to test it, everything I'd changed, it wouldn't start. And I discovered the fuel bulbs were like, fa like failing. And then I don't know, I just pulled everything, pulled everything off, apart, pulled tested it, off. and then it just happened to spark again. And I turned the key for like just the tiniest second and now it's starting, going into forward, going into reverse. So. With the engine fixed, it was time to explore what the Clarence River had in store for us. Goodbye, Yamba Tavern. Thanks for having us. Join us next episode as we head up river, exploring all the quirky towns along the way, and enjoy some farm side sailing. Not from around here, are you? <laughs> if you're new to the channel, be sure to give us a thumbs up subscribe and turn on the notifications bell. A huge thank you to our patrons and welcome on board Murray. Cheers legends. That's why you the engine. Oh what? They're <laughs> That's insane. Engine well fishing hole. It's like an Eskimo hole. <laughs> What'd you ask me to get you from the shop Michael? A lighter, a normal lighter, not a <laughs> 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 <laughs>